even though initially this bit of news isn't about Formula One, it could have ramifications for the Formula One side of things. As well as providing this team some very important tools in their arsenal, if certain things go about the way they are going right now. So news broke out overnight regarding the closure of the NASCAR project of Gene Haas and Tony Stewart, the team shutting down operations after over 20 years of competition in various cups and with various drivers, which has seen some success. The team has seen nearly 100 victories in their tenure, and they did win a title last year, but a lot of people were getting the impression that the Tony Stewart side of things was seemingly growing weary of being in NASCAR and instead wanted to focus on drag racing. One of his properties has come up on the market and it's going for over $20 million, and admittedly, from these pictures, that ranch does look really, really nice and uh, odd. And because this team is shuttering operations at the end of this year, this leaves four places on the NASCAR roster up for grabs, or they are four charters, meaning the right to be part of the NASCAR calendar permanently. Apologies if I'm not all too familiar with the lingo of NASCAR, but this is the best I can muster based on what I've seen from NASCAR Full Speed on Netflix, as well as things that I've just gotten through osmosis over the years. But these charters are big business, and these slots can go for tens of millions of dollars, and this could mean a pretty penny for anybody looking to sell up. And since Gene Haas is the co-owner of the operation, this in turn means he would profit from this as well. And completely mask over the fact that Ford is seemingly not looking to step in and help in either supporting the team financially, or in regards to improving performances which reportedly are lacking in this new era of NASCAR. Okay, you provided us some NASCAR news, big whoop. What does this mean for the Haas F1 team? Well, it could mean a lot of things, and it couldn't have come at a better time where certain regulations are going and certain policies, especially the Concord Agreement. Gene Haas will have a lot more time on his hands come 2025 to focus on the Formula One project, and is also showing no signs of selling up. Of course, they are going to be operating the team for the rest of the year, and they've still got to think about the wage packets for their employees and making sure they've got somewhere to go, helping them out. That's going to take up some time. But come the end of the year, going into the last year before a new regulation cycle, ooh, more money for Haas. Especially when all of the rumours surrounding the next Concord Agreement are coming about, and the recent 180 from the boss of the FIA, these might be worrying times for Haas F1 after them finally steadying the ship financially. For the next Concord Agreement that will run through 2030, there are plenty of rumours going about as to what will actually be contained in it, and one of the big rumours is that that fabled cost cap, instead of going down even further, will increase again. Okay, back to $145 million like it was originally. No, a, a bit higher than that. 200? No, it's 220. Yeah, a two thirds increase at a time when people are supposed to be thinking about efficiencies and saving money, now teams have got to try and amass an extra $85 million potentially. What? And yes, $220 million is still far less than the near half of a billion dollars that Ferrari and Mercedes were pumping into their operations back in 2020, but it's still not the right direction, especially when you've got teams like Williams and Sauber plowing in loads and loads of money to try and keep up and refresh themselves. But at least one good thing's come out of the rumours that supposedly in this cost cap, maternity leave is going to be lumped into it, as well as entertaining staff. Hey Charles, do you think your co-workers should have fun without the bean counters getting involved? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. With the sale of the NASCAR team, this could go in part to ensuring Haas continues to reach the cost cap or come close to it as the team starts to issue itself of its Gunther Steiner era and maintain a less controversial period of its history. Yes, of course, the Monaco double DNF didn't help, but yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's done now. I'll try and keep that to a minimum because there are plenty of other things to discuss. For the longest time, Haas has been sort of struggling in terms of getting up to the cost cap limit. Yeah, they're not exactly strapped for cash, but they could easily have done with more. And so far, it's further capitalizing on the good times of Haas, because in the Constructors' Championship, they're doing pretty decently. This is their best result of seventh than they've had in a long time. But then again, let's be real here. It's not exactly hard to be seventh place in the Constructors at the moment. What with Williams and Sauber going through a major renovation and transformation of their operations, fundamental changes... And then Alpine, well, you already know what I think about that. Oh, 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 that take yesterday. Oh, that was a hot potato, wasn't it? Look, I'm not looking to take the wind out of the sails of Haas. Things have turned around well since the start of the year when there were tremendous concerns of the commitment from the team's major and sole investor. With Ayo Komatsu, the new team principal, being a very major supporter of Gene Haas's principle of 
counting the pennies and not overspending, we were all thinking that, oh great, oh, Haas are being tone deaf. They're not paying attention to what all the other teams are doing around them. And instead, they are just being penny pinchers and not really investing in brand new technology like Gunther Steiner wanted to do. And was partly the reason why he left the team in the first place because there was that disconnect. At the height of its popularity, F1 is attracting a lot of interest from venture capital firms taking slices of the pie, big blue chip sponsors from America in the form of Visa investing in Red Bull. And then of course, let's not forget celebrity investors. Oh, that's not looking good at Alpine now, is it? For now, though, I think Haas can have a pretty relaxing time of it, not really being tested all too much. Sure, they might want to try and go for sixth place in the constructors, but that's a tall order at the moment. But so far, I do not think that they are going to be last this year. They are showing fair degrees of competency. They are upgrading like an F1 team should. They have two drivers, which can do the business most of the time. And just things are looking quite smooth, boring, bland. And quite frankly, we really need to see a bland house for a couple of years. And yes, of course, Alpine could improve as they get their act together, copying McLaren's 2023 scrapbook and uh, other ways of changing things. But seeing Haas at the back of the pack, yeah, that's not at all likely. Yes, of course, just a few months ago, I was thinking that Gene Haas was an incredible skin flint. But you know what? Things aren't looking so dire in a post Gunther era because Gunther had become Haas and Haas had become Gunther. Without Steiner, people would have thought, well, What's the point of Haas? They're incredibly irrelevant. And some people do still think that today, including the United States Senate, calling them an American team. That being said, I can't wait to hear what Gunther Steiner has to say on his tour in October. I've definitely got tickets for that. One trend that Haas are thankfully headed toward is that of an engineer-first leadership model, with Komatsu being in charge of engineering prior to this for many years. Continuity is important here. And yes, of course, I think it's quite obvious. Ayo Komatsu is not a flamboyant personality. But quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of flamboyant personalities in every single team of the Formula One grid. Yes, there's a place for them right at the top when the drama can be incredibly spicy and there's a lot more to play for. But right at the back, we need people who are in charge of the operations where they can get things done. Leave all of the drama and controversy to your Totos, to your Christians, to your Freds, and even to your Zacks. Let them flail their arms around the cameras for 20 minutes and that will easily entertain a lot of folks. All the while, Ayo Komatsu can try and fix the situation at Haas and make them look like a conventional F1 team. Mike Crack can continue to swoon over Lance Stroll for the rest of eternity. James Vowles can continue to be obsessed with data gathering whilst he throws all their copies of Office 365 in the bin. Alessandro Bravi at Sauber can continue to do whatever he is doing there. And Bruno Famine can just, uh, continue to watch the world burn. You might be thinking I've completely done a 180 regarding Haas, having really chastised them over the last few months, but I think we can all agree that we were all sick and tired of the thing that Haas had become in recent years. And in 2023, they really didn't offer anything to the table. Even with Gunther Steiner there, he was sort of living off the legacy of 2018 through 2021. He didn't really have anything to get stuck into in terms of big controversies, aside from being right at the back when they looked really good in qualifying. That was all they had. Okay, save for maybe a situation in Austin with the right to review shenanigans and they really took the mickey out of it. And that's meant the tire deck issues that they've been dealing with for four years really came up to the fore and showed us all that, hey, why haven't they fixed that yet? As far as many were concerned, they spent last year mostly just pootling around at the back of the track. Now that was the word of the day from the Monaco Grand Prix, according to the British commentators. Pootling. Pootling. Ooh, I do like that word. And now we've got Gunther Steiner suing the team and then Haas suing him back, all regarding use of their likeness and images and vice versa and all that stuff. I think it's quite safe to say that that era of Haas is completely done and dusted. And even though we have seen in interviews, including the original statement, Gene trying to be diplomatic with Gunther and say that, oh, this breakdown wasn't entirely his fault. I think it was safe to say that when it came to being a team principal, Gunther was really good at making things happen originally and getting things off of the ground. But when it comes to adaptability and changing with the times, yeah, that's something that he did struggle over. And that was completely culminated in the singular Austin upgrade that completely failed and divided the drivers. 
And even the Netflix Drive to Survive star himself admitted that, yeah, maybe he should have gone a little bit earlier than he did. It made me realize something, that one of the only reasons that Gunther Steiner was kept around was because of the Drive to Survive success. It provided Hass some recognition, some relevance, especially with an American audience. And it continued to grow and grow and grow. And it peaked in the era of 2022 when it looked like that their resurgence was about to happen and at one point they were fifth in the constructors, one of the highest positions they've had since 2018. But then it completely fell off, Mick got dropped and then they were just busy at the back, they had a really nice stable sponsor, there wasn't really anything to get stuck into. So you could easily say that Haas had realised that oh, we've gotten as much money as we can out of Gunther, he's not really providing us any good results so uh, yeah bye. And another reason why I think Gene Haas is quite happy about this arrangement to sell the charters for the NASCAR division is that there was a sudden U-turn from the FIA president Ben Suliam regarding the situation of Andretti. Ben Suliam being one of the biggest champions for Michael Andretti and his team getting into Formula 1 for the longest time. And now suddenly, he doesn't look quite as close to him anymore. In fact, he sort of aligned himself with the teams and Stefano Domenicale. What? Okay, I get it now. Because remember a couple of weeks ago, there were talks that Suliam and Dominicali had brokered a peace deal to try and ease the tensions that had been brewing since the start of last year, before the expression of interest and brand new teams came in. It was sort of not that great before then. It's meant that during the Monaco Grand Prix weekend, Ben Suliam said that, oh, maybe Andretti should look to try and buy itself in, buy an existing team instead of being an 11th team. And that's been going completely against the original expression of interest where it was looking for brand new teams for a brand new slot. So it does mean, in a way, Suliam has sort of rendered that original expression of interest meaningless. Just Andretti could have just gone in and bought a team without having to go through those FIA checks and balances. In fact, mm, okay. There's something going on here. This just does not seem right because I reckon this has got something to do with what's going on in the US government and the Department of Justice regarding antitrust laws. The Formula One Management Department, Liberty Media, and now the FIA joining forces ready in case there's a lawsuit going down in America because they need to be in a united front. But all this has gone and done has brought the FIA into contention when originally they were Andretti's biggest champions. Now they've turned away and effectively betrayed Andretti. What? And this has made me go on and think, well, okay, who would then be vulnerable for a potential buyout order? Oh, would you look at that? It's Haas. That's right, Michael Andretti, for the low, low price of $780 million as of October 2023, you can buy yourself into the sport and the spot at the big boys table, as well as potentially throwing 700 workers into the streets and mothballing the team's facility since Andretti's been building their own and hiring their own staff. Yeah, capitalism. I seriously bet that the logic behind Formula One management is going, look, Andretti, come here, come here, come here. Look, I know you want to get into the sport, but come on. We're going to be raising the anti-dilution fee in a couple of years' time, so why don't you save yourself the hassle and the legal issues in the state? Why don't you just buy Haas or buy another team? We are not questioning your legitimacy, but you know we're we're changing the rules here and we're trying to make things easier. And you know, just 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 do what we want to do, yeah? It'll be easier for the both of us. Quality versus quantity. And even Suliam is saying that. This is completely off. And I don't think that this is going to happen for two reasons. First, the boss of Liberty Media reportedly, according to Mario Andretti, has already ended that speculation by saying that he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that Michael Andretti doesn't even get into the sport. And that could easily mean preventing him from becoming an 11th team or him buying out another team. He is determined, apparently and allegedly, to be doing whatever it takes to make sure that Andretti doesn't get in, so long as Michael Andretti is in charge of it. That is pending a US investigation, of course. And let's not forget, one of Liberty Media's companies was already in hot water with the US Senate and the Department of Justice, so... Uh, things could easily change again. And second, Gene would never, ever sell. Michael Andretti has reportedly contacted many teams over the years trying to buy their teams and their operations when F1 was far less valuable. And according to Andretti himself, he's contacted Gene many times thinking about some kind of buyout deal or a arrangement or something like that and was constantly rebuffed and so thusly he gave up on the issue. No matter how much pressure that Gene gets from the club to maybe try and put all this Andretti mess to bed and just give him the slot, take the money and go off and retire, no, Gene's never going to do that because there's personal beef here, I'm sure of it. 
That being said though, Haas being the least valuable team in Formula 1, it could easily give a sense of vulnerability to Gene Haas, and maybe this extra cash could be used to invest in the team, and maybe boost up its value, and therefore maybe not make it as vulnerable as say even Williams for example. And then the rest of the teams where they're over 1 billion, and then some of the big ones 2 billion, and then Ferrari, when Lewis Hamilton comes in, probably close to 5 billion, almost 10 times as expensive as Haas is currently. That's completely nuts. And speaking of Ferrari, what they're doing right now at the top of the table could easily trickle down to the likes of Haas. Haas will have Ferrari's complete and utter attention, not just with their reserve driver Oliver Behrman, but all the components and parts that they give Haas as part of their agreement and their arrangement and collaboration. Gene Haas doesn't have to spend money in making bespoke stuff. He could just buy stuff from Ferrari, including the power unit, and therefore profit from Ferrari's success. It's a win-win. Remember back in 2020 when Ferrari were nowhere? Yeah, we got a situation where Alfa Romeo and Haas weren't really anywhere either. And of course, some points, Alfa and Ferrari were contesting for position. That's insane. But right now though, all of this talk of partnering up with Ferrari, which we derided just a few months ago, before we realized how good Ferrari were and are going to become over the next few years, this arrangement couldn't make Gene Haas any more happy because now they've got a close partnership with one of the best teams on the grid. They've now got a hub in Maranello itself, a very close bond with every single facet of Ferrari. And now they're going to be having, as I said, Oliver Behrman. They are going to be the platform to provide Ferrari drivers a boost up to the main team itself. And not to mention Haas is starting to mature finally. They are now looking to purge themselves of the crass and over hypey drive to survive side where Gunther Steiner would just have to say something in his bizarre German accent even though he's Italian thing and then it would easily be put on a t-shirt. They can easily start to move away from the really questionable and gimmicky sponsorship deals where you get Gunther Steiner in a boat or something like that. They can start to look like a proper Formula One team. They can look legitimate. They don't have to do deals where they're holding bags of Chipotle and looking really, really strange just for the sake of gaining an extra couple of million dollars. They can start to look like a serious contender. And that is going to have another benefit because now drivers are going to be looking at Haas and going, hmm, you know what? That's not a bad shout. I'll get in touch with them. Because we already know who's going to be in the seat for next year. Oliver Behrman is clearly going to be replacing Nico Hulkenberg, given the rhetoric that Ayo Komatsu has been talking about with him, not really caring about what he gets up to in F2, and how currently Kimi Antonelli is completely trouncing Behrman. And then, of course, there's the situation regarding Kevin Magnussen. Like I said, I'm not going to get into that incident. I think we need to draw a line on it. It happened. The FIA doesn't really like giving bans anymore because they didn't do that with Gasly last year when he was close to 12 points. And the fact that now he has to be on his best behaviour, and he's really, really close to that race ban, even though he probably might not get it, it means he can't go absolutely all out. He has to think carefully. He's now got to be really careful and go, oh, hang on, I can't do that. I might get two points. Oh, I better be careful. And therefore that limits his potential. And therefore that limits what results he can get. Uh, you can easily see what I'm getting at here. He's really compromised through his own fault. But all this means that Haas could be a safe haven for drivers like Joe, Bottas, Ocon, Okay, maybe not so much these days. It gives these drivers a salvo, an opportunity to just survive in F1 for a couple of more years, maybe be part of something good if Haas seriously benefits from Ferrari's prosperity. And considering, like I said, they are looking to get rid of the Steiner era of Haas for now, I think that Magnussen is part of it, and therefore I really don't see much hope in him staying for another year. And you know what? Thinking about what I've just said, that Haas is now trying to look for ways to sustain itself, especially if the cost cap goes up even more, they might look to drivers who have some F1 experience, but also come with a lot of cash. And that's why I'm thinking, now given that Esteban Ocon's in real hot water right now, currently on probation, according to Alpine, not being dropped for Canada, this might mean that Zhou Guan Yu might get another chance in Formula 1 with another team. Now you might be thinking, oh, you're just saying that because he comes with money. Yes, he does come with money. He also comes with access to the Chinese market, as we saw at China this year, is massive, any team would want that, even the big ones. And then, of course, we've not seen Zhou Guan Yu at his full potential. We briefly saw that at the beginning of the season in 2022 with Alfa Romeo. He did score points on debut when that car looked really good. 
and then not even Bottas could make it work at the end of that year. And then the following year, we've yet to see Zhou Guanyu with a car that has been decent and continued to stay decent. And now that Haas is starting to really get its act together, it's got a Ferrari power unit and powertrain that can really be seen as quite good, especially in the midfield. And Zhou does have experience with that powertrain. This could easily be something that they might like. Continuity. Zhou Guanyu comes with some money. He knows what a Ferrari power unit is like. He has that previous. We can provide him the potential and the leg up to maybe get him some more points because Haas is looking better and better by the month. So therefore, I do think Joe has a good shout of it, and I kind of want it for him now. I'm rooting for him. I hope he does well. Yes, of course, this might mean that Valtteri Bottas does get snubbed for that Haas seat, but maybe Williams might want him. Maybe another team might want him. Who knows? Given what Haas is trying to do to try and protect itself from a buyout, a hostile takeover, or Andretti getting in the way, Joe Guan Yu might be the shout. It's not a bad idea. It's a safe idea. And I think that's the definition of Haas right now safe. Don't rock the boat. Don't take too many risks. Be practical, pragmatic, smooth, boring, bland. That's what you need to be to try and get anywhere in the midfield. And so far, it's working. And it might continue to improve as things get better before the new regulation cycle. Yes, of course, it's not the Haas we're used to, but we can't rely on that anymore. It doesn't work. So that NASCAR sale couldn't have come at a better time. What also doesn't seem to work anymore is Ocon at Alpine, and Monaco didn't help matters, but to remove him from Canada? Nah, that's too much. You can find out why I'm bucking the trend of most F1 commentators in this video here. But before you go and watch it, I'm not condoning what he did. I'm just saying this explains it and why he is still in hot water. Ooh. 